Yeah. Um, so the intent was um, of this talk to give everyone a little bit of overview and um, yeah, a site where we go, where we come from, what is going on. And yeah, my name is Peter Kovac. I joined the project in 2016. Um, when I read that there was a lot of need of um, um, helpers and people. And uh, I thought, yeah, a good project I can do in my free time and I want to keep Open Office alive. I was then chairman from 2017 to 2019. Um, where you can see that my most um, engagement was more less on the programming level, more on the organizational level. Um, I do development stuff as I managed to do it. And mostly I'm orientating myself and we will see how huge open office is in a minute. The agenda. I want to give a general project introduction. Um, um, if you want a short going through history, so you get a feeling where Open Office comes from. Um, then I want to look with you um, not into the code, but very high level at the code. Um, I want to look with you a little bit into the build environment, uh, what we have there, what we tools we use and stuff like that. And I want to go into the web support stuff, um, which we maintaining, um, yeah, as far as I hope that this will, um, suit you, um, yeah. So, yeah, you see now this is a little bit of mind stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, I had no much time. So sorry for if the slides are a bit chaotic. So project introduction. Um, open Office has been, yeah, you could say became open source from Star Office. So birth is in 2000 openoffice.org um, and the release in 2002 as version one. Um, and it was a real success story until, let's say until 2010, Oracle acquires Sun. And then we have the first nick of it, um, the fork of LibreOffice, where some people uh, thought they'd be better off in another project. I don't want to judge that in any way, just this makes, um, this is for me at least, the current turning point um, of sorts. And um, at that peak time, uh, Open Office has also projected 100 million users at the end of 2010. So you can say quite very successful, very, um, very um, highlighted, a lot of fame in that time. And after that, I mean, a la year later, Oracle steps down and donates the code to Apache Foundation. In 2012, um, the project um, graduates from the incubator and becomes a top level project. I have not mentioned that here. Um, in 2014, IBM leaves the um, participate the, uh, or IBM participates for the last time in release of uh, for 4.1.1, and today we are at the release 4.1.7, and we have 295 downloads at the moment. So. As you can see, there is a 
in this in this short very rough history i mean there's a lot of more and you could might go much more deeper and deeper but you can see there is a there's a kind of in the first slide in the first part you we have a uprise and then you have the feeling of people leaving and going so and the development yeah goes down definitely i mean in the last six years we did mostly maintenance releases and some people think it's bad i think it's cool because we are still here people still get um, a maintained um, project and so on and it's working for them yeah so if it's working for them you can see on this slide here um there's still a lot of users. I mean, um, in one, um, I mean, if you if you count if you count every download um, per month, then we end up between roughly 1.4 million and 2.3 million on the top, and on average 1.7 million. Yeah, you can see here a slow slow decrease if you want to see that. But I think it's still quite a lot of downloads for um, yeah for people not using it. But so I would say people are using the software, and not not a few of them, quite a lot. Yeah. So if you are interested in more of the history, I think it's a good place to go. Um, to visit the, um, the talk, Streiflichter eines langen Weges, um, which is in German. Um, so I, I'm sorry for that. If I tried to organize something that we get that in English somehow, maybe with undertitled subtitles, but yeah, very complicated thing. But I'm very happy this talk comes to life as a lot of talks we have this year and i think everyone is a is a good thing yeah so yeah let's go into the code yeah um if you talk about the code we approach quite a lot of um Apache is not a small application, it's a big one. And so it's not so easy. Um, and we have seen there are lots of users that um, using the software. So we cannot just change something from left to right or something like that. So we have, we need some good um, way of um, releasing the software in first place. So in the past, we had almost only um, um, getting committer um, add-ins on our SVN. And if there's an outside patch, one committer has to commit it and then test it. And we always did this release branch. So um, release branching. So we have um, currently, we maintain two release branches, which is the 4.1x um, 4. 4. or 4.2x. Um, 4.2x is the um, upcoming release, if you want, the next generation. On 4.1x is the old, really old if you go back into the history i mean the 4.10 was i mean ibm was participating in that yeah um and a 4.2 release um is is um yeah in the pipe for for years now i think yeah, pretty one, pretty much since I joined the project, but it's still not satisfying stable. So there's still bugs going around and we are still hunting stuff down. Um, 
and or we are still looking for fixing bugs yeah when they will fix there's no real time plane because most people today work on pro bono or um, as volunteers as mostly said and EBM was the last big company leaving the um, leaving the project. Um, I mean, in OS2, there is some community fund financed um, development going on, but this is mainly focusing on porting OpenOffice to OS2 and uh, not so much um, developing it, at least as far as I'm aware of. So in the last year or two, we switched to Git. Um, and with switching to Git, um, the link or the, the site in GitHub became active. And we can now accept um, PRs um, or um, yeah, um, from the community, P, uh, there's really low ex, um, accessible. Uh, there's a really low level of um, bringing code to us through GitHub, which is a um, which is an, an um, great um, a great development, um, and people are um, looking into the code and, and fixing something or telling us, yeah, here, there, you can fix that and that, uh, this one, or how about changing this? Yeah, there's some, some communication going on um, um, around that and gives the project much, much more visibility. And as I said, volunteers have an easier way of adding it, we have a little bit of an issue getting then the code really accepted because we need testing the stuff. We want to have a, uh, we want to, we don't have the resources to bug, uh, to debug things over and over. There, there are enough issues left from the past. So, the um, the project uh, the the not project that the process to get code in is not really settled at the moment. So we need to work a little bit on that um, to get there a little bit more um, speed on it. But um, it's definitely a good way to, um, to introduce new fixes, extend, uh, not extensions, but um, um, code improvements, yeah, or basic features. Um, if we look a little bit deeper, if we're coming from the release and we look into a little bit more into the code, this is the lowest code I want, lowest uh, look in, look into the code I want to take to, in this talk. Um, you will see um, that open office consists of a lot of pieces and um, smaller, I would say, units or modules. Um, they're not really a library um, because they're not very independent. But we have this, the Uno, Uno um, um, interface system, um, which is a core component currently under in open office. Then we have um, the basic language. Um, of course, we have on and on the top we have the the applications. Yeah, and you see that, um, that um, language modules L10 or E18N are considered as languages. Um, are um, are coming um, are taking place or um, linking into the code at a lot of places. Yeah, so the code is as this picture also so shows not so easy to get into. So you need some time. You need to to um, 
uh, jump into the code, you need to look where and how you can you can change something, and you need to extensively test it because it's not really um, always that good isolated. Yeah. So if you look at bringing, if you want to to um, make a change. What skills do you need? Um, Java is a um, Java. Open Office is a multi-language application, mostly written in C++, but not everything. Um, there's a lots of Java from. Um, um, I'm told, for example, a lot of wizards are written in Java. Um, make files are there. XSLT, Postscripts, C. Um, I think personally C is a little bit misleading because a lot of C++ stuff is in reality more C style C++. And also other languages are used, uh, Perl and Python, for example. Um, and for that, we will see a little bit more in another slide. I took the numbers from GitHub, yeah. so. I trust them that they aligned the code right. Mm, if you want to see learn more about the code stuff, I would really recommend to you um, looking into um, the talk from Jim building Ap Apache on um, Open on Mac OS, um, which is really um, helpful if you. If one developer starts and says, I want to um, help you guys or want to help the project um, to, to work a little bit better or something, I'm interested in open office. The first thing we usually tell is try to build open office first time. It's an adventure on its own. <laughs> um, yeah, or look the, um, watch the, um, the talk of um, <clears throat> um, Carl um, about the Open Office Union programming with Groovy. I mean, I think this is a this is an awesome feature. Um, I think written as an extension, right, Carl? Um, and um, yeah, a lot of features are um, done in Open Office as an extension and not included in the basic software. I mean, Open Office has the strategy to keep people um, to keep stable, and so we do not change the core so much. Yeah, we want to take the core together, wanted to have it stable. Uh, people that use open office are usually uh, not very techy style. They're not digital leaders. They're happy if they if they manage what they came what they opened the app for. Yeah. And there some conservative is I think is a feature, not a bug. Okay, if we go further on into um, developing Open Office, there are lots of other resources. Yeah, um, there is the wiki, which is um, which contains also some developer information. There, I think the best entry point is um, the architecture. Um, um, category site um, where you see a rough overflow which topics are covered by the uh, in in the wiki. Um, um, we will talk about the wiki a little bit later in detail, or in in uh, from a dif different perspective, not in detail, but in from a different perspective. Um, and we will. Um, and you, as I said before, we have this the UNO layers, which um, if we go back into the architecture, um, 
you see that there is always um, the uni uno for example are always um, also not all not uh, only a module on the bottom but they're all also gluing the middle and the top together and one thing is um, the EDL reference, which is basically the API from OpenOffice, at least to my understanding. Um, if we need to look at the code, search the code, we use OpenGrok. We have the instance on OpenGrok, open, um, the openoffice.org. Um, we use Bugzilla, um, which contains the um, bugs um, opened up from, I think from the first day you can find bugs. Um, at least if I look with search for open bugs, I found 10,000 open bugs and yeah. And it looks like it's more, uh, um, Bugzilla is more cutting the search list than um, that's all the bugs. <laughs> so if you then start looking into the bugs, some are ex enhancements, requests, some are duplicates, some are um, some notes someone has taken and never closed it, old stuff, um, just because there are a lot of open issues, it doesn't mean they are all relevant. And so it's really, really difficult to find the relevant and problematic stuff. So I opened another tracking on Jira just to get an overview, which so the Jira um, tickets are, are more like epics and they try to collect the Baxilla bugs and audit them. I mean, I could do it in Baxilla probably, but I thought it might be better if the if this is something where we have more of an overview, if it's a little bit of a refresh start, but not losing the old and still working the old. We had a discussion if we want to drop Baxilla in favor of Jira, but Baxilla has its favorite, despite it's old, it's very, very fast. And not everyone has a good internet connection. So we stick with Baxilla and try to work around it. Yeah, there's also, I didn't note it, uh, a Jira Confluence Wiki, which is more used for project organization than for the wiki. That's maybe later. Yeah. As you see, um, there's a lot of stuff. If you look at the building tools, um, in the code section of um, GitHub, I, um, you could see that there are some make files. Um, these make files divide themselves currently between dmake and gmake. Then we have parts that are compiled with end, mostly, or I think end is used for Java. Um, then we have various uh, scripts. For example, the EDL um, needs to be generated um, from, or there's a code generator around it that use the EDL. Um, then we have some scripts that handle versioning, um, the dmake, gmake, and end build system are connected through Perl scripts. Yeah, if you want to maintain that, it's a very complicated system. Um, a lot of history you find in them, in, in, in the setup, it's grown. Um, we tried to move to GMake, but run into various issues around it. So the current idea plan is to move to SCONS, which is based on Python. Um, and 
So our hope is to move everything into this combination and we will keep only um, things that um, we need for building open office and we cannot we cannot do with this SCOM, with SCOMs and Python. Yeah. Okay, I mentioned here open crop again, which is important um, because um, the code is so huge. You need to um, you need to find um, the cross links if you look at code. If you want to change something, you should change what is else affected, what could be the impact, um, and this makes changes small and careful. Yeah. Also in the future, at least if it goes for me, um, um, and, uh, and that the environment goes also into modern EDA. A current EDA um, can help you with uh, can um, help you with um, code um, structuring a little bit, or um, browsing, or maybe uh, be a little bit different than Open Grok. In, in terms of searching code or, get, or getting code together. Um, but since the EDL um, environment we have, EDL is we describe an APE part as an uh, XML file and the code generator generates the code to it. Again, this is my understanding. Um, then, um, not always an um, EDA or open grub can make this link through the EDL, yeah, because it's very specific to open office. Um, I think only LibreOffice still maintains this technique. If they do, I don't know. So web extension. So as I said before, um, if we look at open office, it's only very core, basic, the um, more or less fundamentals, the really important um, features that an office suite needs from our view. And if this is, gets extended or if we add new features or other people add new features, these goes as web extensions. Um, we host them under extensions.openoffice.org. I found um, from my access that we have 512 extensions published, which is quite a lot. And um, I heard that you can do um, that. You can add a lot of good features. I mean, um, uh, PDF compatibility or uh, latex compatibility, I heard. Um, I think best is there maybe also to talk to. Um, I think Mechtilde can maybe um, talk to um, what can be done <laughs> on this stuff or how um, open office can be extended. It's a question often I hear uh, that is asked on um, our open office stands, which the or tables that we have on the um, on events here in Europe where Mechtilde and Michael um, are visiting. They have their tour, which is now due to Corona not taking place. Yeah. If there is any issues with this, um, with the extension papers, uh, extension papers, uh, oh, extension pages, then um, the best address address is sysadmin at openoffice.org because this was always an issue a little bit that people did not know where to go when they had issues. So, looking at the wiki. The wiki is a really huge stuff. I mean, um, it took me a little bit of research, but 12, almost 12,000 um, content pages and almost 13,000 files. I think 
this is really a lot yeah um there's also a lot of issues um around the web wiki um and um keith has um started um, a, um documentation um endeavor or project um to where where we hope that people joining this um and maybe this is one part that can be fixed someday um i don't know but there's a lot of um stuff needs to be looked at um old stuff um yeah some some content was not touched since 2005 maybe that's not really modern today on the other hand open office does not change a lot so we since we are very conservative also a lot of information stays valid at least in parts yeah um and is still accurate today and can be used if you just try it. Um, yeah, we have also other pages. Um, this is, and the normal page is giving me um, some riddles. <laughs> I'm just not very good at distinguishing them. There we have a project um, page um i think that's openoffice.apache.org and then we have openoffice.org where more the user content is um both web pages together is something in the in the gigabyte range on on data um they use an old cms system which needs to be migrated um and not every every page that there is is really outdated there's a lot of inf information but there's also content that is hopelessly outdated or useless yeah i mean um you can search a lot in total there's another talk on this i can recommend um open office on the web David will talk about our web infrastructure a little bit more. And I hope this um, interests some people. Yeah. Yeah. This is what I could gather for a little bit. I can um, maybe talk with you a little bit time if there is. Um, we will, I think what we can hold up is that we can, uh, that we will stay around, that people who are on the project um, are um, returning, not always online, not always active, but they're, they do what they can, except our hero, Matthias, who is every day there and do something for open office, which is really awesome, yeah? Uh, my MV my personal MVP. <laughs> yeah. So, is there any questions? Hmm. Yeah, if not, um, then we can go to Mestilde's session. Yeah, sorry, Dave, you have entered just the session. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> um, yeah. I hope that was interesting for you somehow
So we have still time. Yeah, then I say thank you. Thank you. Um, I hope that you enjoy the um, the Apache Con at home. And yeah, see you soon on the talk or on uh, on the email. Yeah. Bye. Yes, yeah, see you, Carl. Bye.